Hamas is ISIS, potentially even worse, given some of the first-hand accounts that are coming out of the Middle East. Some of it impossible to comprehend. Maybe easier for those who have dealt with terrorists like this. Former Australian Special Forces Commander Wes Hennessy joins me now. Wes, thank you so much for your time. You've done seven tours in Afghanistan and Iraq. How would you describe the kind of terrorist that Israel is confronting now in the Middle East? Um, they're a formid formidable uh, terrorist. The issue with uh, a lot of the terrorist organisations and what's very hard for Australians and, and other persons around the world, for that matter, to comprehend and understand is we overlay a rational thought process or a mm -hmm. rational mindset um, over the terrorist's mindset. Now, the terrorism mindset is to terrorise. Now, that mindset is extremely irrational and we've seen that demonstrated a couple of weeks ago, again, um, very sadly, with the attack on Israel. How do you tackle someone that it's almost impossible to understand? As you say, they don't think like we do. They don't feel empathy. They don't see other people's pain and feel sick like we would. How do you fight that? Good question. The sad reality is they understand brute force. They understand extreme violence. And that is almost all that they understand. Mm. Um, you know, they're obsessed with a ideology, which again is extremely hard for us to understand. So uh, with the extremist component of some of the religions, um, you know, it causes them to think this way and believe uh, what they believe in, um, you know, which is, you know, having this worldwide jihad um, against the West. And we must make that point. This is against the West. It's not against Israel. It was directly, I should say, sorry. Mm. Um, but it is certainly an attack on the West as per all of their attacks. And we've seen that and how quickly it's uh, bubbled over. But in regards to combating them and trying to understand them, uh, all we can do is study as much and gain as much information and intelligence through all our uh, different agencies and assets to understand what the current motives are every time a particular terrorist organisation strikes. And in this particular case, uh, what I haven't heard uh, commented on or commentated on much is what we should be or should be analysing the most in the earlier period, as in now and in the last week or so, is Hamas knew what Israel's uh, reaction would be. Yes, correct. So sometimes it's not the action, it's the reaction. So they knew what the reaction would be. So they, they did the action, not for the reasons I don't believe that we're commonly reporting that why they did those horrific acts that they did, but they did it for the reaction. Israel was always going to react this way. Now, look, if we look back that... Sorry, if we go back to approximately a week ago and then we look where we are now of how many other countries uh, you know, are, are suffering extreme uh, extremist groups who are creating a lot of violence in their cities. Um, you know, we've seen some horrific um, episodes here in Australia. Uh, Paris... Uh, sorry, the French have deployed, I think, 6,500 troops yeah. um, across their streets. That's military troops. We've seen horrific scenes through the UK um, and then all through uh, Middle Eastern um, countries as well, where a lot of the Western embassies have uh, told their personnel to get out of those countries ASAP. Uh, President Biden today issued a worldwide warning for yeah. any American to be vigilant. So this is the reaction that I believe the action uh, was was for um, to stir up you know the hornet's nest uh, for want of yeah. a better term and we're witnessing that right now in every single country uh, basically in the world. So given Israel is saying it will follow the rules of war you know what it's like and 99.99 percent of our soldiers as well taking on these evil evil beings having to follow rules when they don't recognize nor follow any. It's, it's very, very difficult. Um, nobody, and, and I certainly don't, so I support Israel's attack, but I don't support, um, you know, the blatant killing of uh, civilians. Mm. Um, we've got to look at Gaza. You know, we've got uh, just short of uh, 2.1. It's be over that now. I think that was a 2020 consensus. Um, but, you know, in 365 square kilometres... We've got 2.2-plus um, million people. Yeah. Also to note, it's a highly densit density uh, population, so most of the buildings there are high density. Now, to conduct 
the attacks of the scale that they, they are and have done and will continue to do, to do that in a high-density population like that, they know there is going to be CIVCAS, being civilian casualties, and other collateral damage that's not intended, but it is a risk of them going on the offensive, such an aggressive offensive, as they have done. And unfortunately, um, this is a matter, you know, a fact of war. There, we have not waged a war since, you know, day dot in this world where civilians haven't been a casualty of war. Now, I'm not, again, I emphasise, no. I'm not condoning it. I'm saying it's a reality of warfare. And yeah. in this particular, um, you know, strip, in the, uh, being the Gaza Strip, um, it's it very much accentuated because it's such high density. Like I yeah. said, 365 square kilometres, 2.2 million people. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and Hamas a lot of shown... people are going to unnecessarily die. Yep, time and time again that they are willing to use their own people as human shields. It is heartbreaking, the whole thing. Wes, thank you so much for your expertise and your time. My pleasure, Erin. Thank you.